All right, so I just uh, made this example up. Uh, so it's either going to go well or totally awful, so bear with me. Uh, one thing that we haven't covered so far is talking about something called summation variable. Okay? And sometimes we have constraints that are based on a percentage. Okay? So, uh, for example, we might say that you know, we want only 30% of our production to be in product A, or that no more than 80% of the people employed can be part-time, or something to that effect, okay? So sometimes we have what we call uh, percentages of a whole constraints, but we don't know what that whole is, okay? So we can't say like, well, we're gonna employ 100 people, so less, no more than 80% can be uh, part-time, so it has to be less than or equal to 80, because we haven't decided what that whole is. We don't know how many people we're employing, okay? So we have to base a constraint on a value we don't know yet. We don't know what the whole is, the total is, so we have to build something that is based off of something we don't know, and that's called, we call these, these constraints summation constraints, because they're constraints based off the sum of something that we're, that we're creating, okay? So I want to look at this example, it says, and we've done one kind of like this, okay, kind of like this. We've done a portfolio model, but this one's a little bit different. It says, uh, Dr. Miko has been given 100,000 in the following table investment options. So I've been given four investment options, AAA, BBB, CCC, and DDD. Uh, each has a potential return and a guaranteed return. It has a, basically, a, we'll call it a, uh, a ceiling and a floor, okay? That's the ceiling is the potential return and the guaranteed return is the floor. Uh, we also have a variable that talks about their liquidity, if it's, if it's liquid or not. Liquid means you know, we can cash it out the next day. We can get our money as quick as we want, right? So we're saying, I'm saying investment AAA and investment DDD are immediately liquid, right? So I can, it's like my, my ATM, my bank account, that's immediately liquid. I can take all that money out tomorrow. Some things, my house is not immediately liquid, right? I'd have to take all my kids out and sell them. So it, it, take, it takes some time to do that. I also know that the risk rating for CCC is incredibly high. Like it has high potential return, uh, but it's, it's in that high risk category, okay? So, so if we were to set this up, and I just wanna go to, I just wanna go to here first, because we know how to do to this sentence. But what I wanna show you is how to do the last two sentences today, all right? So, it says, Dr. Miko wants a guaranteed return of 3,000 and a potential return of 12,000, but wants to minimize his total investment. All right, so I want you guys to help me set this up, all right? Help me set this up. The first part of this, anyways. What are my decision variables? What am I deciding for this portfolio for Dr. Miko? What am I deciding? What am I deciding? Thurston? What am I deciding? I came to you as my financial advisor, I said $100,000, me and you are deciding where to, what to do with it, right? Where to put it, right? What, what funds to put it in? So our decision variables basically are, well, the A, how much to put in the, the triple A, how much to put in triple B, how much to put in triple C, and how much to put in triple D. You know, that's what I'm deciding, right? That's how to mix that up. What am I trying to maximize or minimize here? What am I trying to maximize or minimize? What am I trying to maximize or minimize? I'm trying to minimize my total investment. I don't want to invest that much. I want to keep as much as I can, right? I don't want to put it all in. But I know I have to, I want to meet these things. So I'm trying to minimize my total investment. And my total investment is AAA, plus BBB, plus CCC, plus DDD, yes? Yes, okay. Make sense? We've done that, we know that. Uh, subject two, so right now if this was the, the, the problem, I'd say, oh, don't invest anything, right? And I minimize all, all, you have all kinds of walking around money. But I want a guaranteed return of three grand, 
and a potential return of 12 grand. So those to me say, I want, or I'm requiring, or you know, that, that's something that I have to have. Those are gonna go down in the bottom in my subject to my constraint area. So a guaranteed return of 3,000. So that's saying greater than or equal to three grand. And let's see, uh, my guaranteed return is 0 0.05 for AAA plus, it looks like it's 0 0.05 for BBB. It looks like C is zero. And it looks like DDD D, D is 2%. Okay. So right, if I invest 1,000 in each of those, I get what? Uh, 50 bucks, 50 bucks, and 20 bucks. Right, so that's 120 bucks, not quite enough. Yes? So I know I'm gonna to have to invest more than that. Yes? I also know I want 12,000 in potential return. So it looks to me like, okay, that's 10% of AAA. That's 5% of BDB. That's 25% of CCC and 8% of DDD. Okay. And what else? There's be one more constraint I'd have to add in here. I only have how much? 100,000. 100, so AAA plus BBB plus CCC plus DDD has to be less than or equal to 100K. All right, and this will work. This is nothing new to us, okay? We, we can do this. this is, that's, that's like we went at that uh, George Rifkin problem, right? The, he inherited some money. So the next two sentences, or maybe that's one big run-on sentence, is something we don't have the tools to do at this point. So let's look at this one, it says, he also wants to ensure that at least 40% of his total investment is immediately available and that no more than 30% of his total investment is invested in the high risk CCC investment. So let's take, that's actually two constraints. There's two things that we'd have to adhere to. Let's take them one at a time. He says he wants to ensure that at least 40% of his total investment is immediately available. So there's two things that are immediately available, AAA and DDD, right? Those are the two that are immediately available. How would I write that? <clears throat> AAA plus DDD has to be greater than or equal to 40% of what? That's the key right there. 40% of what? The objective. Your minimum investment. Okay. My total, right? 40% of my total, which is, as you're right, you're right, is AAA plus BBB plus CCC plus DDD, right? That's, that's what my total is. Because I don't know what this is yet, right? I don't know if I'm investing, my total is going to be 20,000 or 50,000 or 80,000. If, if I knew how much this was, I could just say, well, if I knew it was 100,000, I could just say, AA plus DDD has to be greater than or equal to 40,000, because I know the total is 100,000, right? But I don't know what that is. I haven't decided what my total is. Yes? All right, so this is where we build as, as modelers, we build something called a summation variable, okay? And we're gonna do it a little bit differently this semester than I've ever done it, because I just think it might be easier is we're gonna build a, another variable. That's gonna be our total. So I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna make a variable called total. Okay. And I wanna to create total so that it is the sum 
of AAA plus BBB plus CCC plus BBB. How do I do that? How do I force the total to be the sum of those four things? Okay, very good. Who's that? Surface? Okay. Where are things forced in a linear program? Where do we force things? Functions and where? what part of the three parts? The constraints, right? So here's what we would do. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this thing. Well, I'm going to keep it, but there is something we do we call defining a summation variable. Okay, a summation variable is just a total, like we have up there total. And we have to create it before we can use it. Okay, We have to create it before we can use it. And Thurston's right. If we want to create a total variable, we would say AAA plus BBB plus triple C plus triple D is equal to total. And I'm putting it in the bottom in the constraint area, so it's forcing that to be true. But I want to I want to always have a constant over here. So so what would I do here? How do if I want a constant here, how can I how can I get a constant over here? How do I get rid of total over here and bring it over to that side? What's that? Not, not divide. Do more operations. <laughs> subtract, right? So if I subtract total from both sides, this is what I'm left with. Okay. This thing is called a definition constraint. It defines a summation variable. It creates it. It says. AAA plus BBB plus CCC plus DDD minus the total has to be equal to zero, meaning the total has to be the sum of those four damn things, right? Well, how does that change things? Well, this is how it changes things. Up here, instead of having this monstrosity, right? Because what would I, I would have to do, and I don't want to do this, I would have to multiply the 0 0.40 through there, and then you know I want I want a constant over here, so I'd have to subtract. Negative 0.4 OLA over here, negative 0.4 BBB over here, and it, it just it would get ugly quick, right? But now I know AAA plus BBB plus CCC plus CDD equals total. Well, what could I change this to? What could I change that to? Now, once again, we want a constant over here. So how can I get rid of 40% of total here? <coughs> Subtract it from both sides. And I have this. So I know that might have been you know, a big step for, for some of you. But what we've done okay, is we said, hey, we are basing some constraints off the total, but we don't know what the hell the total is, right? We don't know what the total is going to be. So let's create a variable that equals total. And that constraint is called a definition constraint, and that's exactly what it does. It says AAA plus BBB plus CCC plus DDD minus total equals zero. It creates a variable for us. Okay, it creates a variable for us. Now we can use that variable. And that's what I've done here. How about the last one? I, so, so I have all this captured except the last one. And it says no more than 30% of his total investment is invested in the high risk CCC investment. So what would that look like? What would that look like in a constraint? No more than 30% of the high risk CCC. So we're trying to limit CCC, right?
So CCC has to be less than or equal to 30% of total, right? But you skipped a step and said, well, I know I'm going to have to bring it over, so that I'm just going to say negative 0.3, right? That's what you did, okay? But that is doing that. Those last two constraints are modeling that last component. try to do this in Excel. Okay, and I'll show you. What's nice about Excel is how do we create how would we create a total variable in Excel? Instead of using it, and we're going to use a definition constraint first just so we can see it in action. But how else could we create a cell that represents a total of a variable that represents a total of these four variables? Yeah, just sum it, right? Just equal sum. Yeah, that will do it. Okay. So let's let's go into Excel. Get myself a blank workbook here. Um, and I am going to create. How many variables do I have up there? Be careful when you answer this one. AAA, BBB, CCC, whoops, DDD, but what else do I have? Total. That's a variable. And I'm just going to throw ones in there for now. And sometimes when these models get bigger, and this one's getting bigger, I like to kind of build them like a constraint at a time. Just say, yeah, is everything working? Yeah, and then, then add in the next constraint. Okay, so that's how I'm going to do this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, I want to minimize. And you guys told me total. So I'm going to add in my sum product. C2 through G2. And notice I'm including that total variable, because it's a variable. C4 through G4. And remember, the coefficients are what matter. And, and here, this first one, we're minimizing total. We're not the zero DDDs, zero CCC, zero BB, zero, zero AAs. Just minimizing total, so that's one. And I'm going to make that absolute. Let's put in our constraints. Now let's just put in, I'm going to just put in the first two just to even see if this damn thing's feasible, because I don't even know if it's feasible. So let's see, this first one is, what is that, guarantee? I'm putting equal G-U-A-R. And the coefficients are 0 0.05, what is that, 0 0.05 again? Uh, zero and 0 0.02. be greater than or equal to 3,000. Oh, wait, I screwed up. <coughs> this should be zero here. These five are variables. I should have, those are my variables. So this is what I want to copy down here. So that's what my sum product formula. That has to be greater than or equal to 3,000. <coughs> What's that? Thank you. And let's see, my potential. Remember, we're focusing on coefficients. We have 0.1. 
0 0.05, uh, 0.25, and 0.08. Zero for now. Whoops. That's a zero. And that has to be greater than or equal to twelve thousand. Okay, I don't even want to define, I'm not even defining my total value there. Okay, now all I'm gonna do, this is I just want to see if it works to this point. Okay, we're not even factoring in that total variable. Oh yeah, we do have to do that. Have that. Yeah. All right, let's do that. Let's define that value. So I'm gonna go down here to my row eight. I'm gonna say define. And I wanna focus on this. And I wanna focus on the coefficient. So I see <coughs> one, 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 one. What's the coefficient in front of total there? Not one, but negative one, right? Negative one, and that equals zero. That's my cache. Right there. All right, let's just see if it works to this point. All right, so I'm going to move, if I move these values, let's move these values, make sure everything looks like it's set up. Great. Looks like um, things are working as they should. Okay, good. So I'm going to go up here to data. I'm going to go to solver. And it says your objective cell. Well, my objective cell in this case is H4. That's the first thing total and what I'm minimizing. So I'm going to minimize H4 by changing variable cells. Remember, how many variables do I have here? Five. The total variable is a variable. Subject to the constraints. Let's see, I'm going to add in these two together. So I'm going to say add H6 through H7 has to be greater than or equal to J6 through J7. And then H8, and I don't think we've used this one before, but has to be equal to zero, which is J8. So I'm minimizing my total investment. I'm defining a total cell because I'm using it up here, so I have to define it. And I'm looking for a guaranteed investment of or a return of three thousand and a potential return of twelve. If I click on solve, okay, solver finds a solution. I might as well keep the sensitivity report while I'm at it. Oops, that's an old one. And it tells me what I should do is invest 60,000 in AAA, 24,000 in triple C. I'm minimizing my total investment to 84,000 and I'm meeting my return objective, right? Now, what forced this to be 84,000? Why is that 84,000? I didn't put some in there. What forced it to be 84,000? Why is that 84,000? Because that's, if you look in there, there's not a sum formula, there's not an add formula. What forced it to be 84,000? This constraint. Remember, Excel solver says, I have to adhere to this. So it forced this to be 84,000 because it had to be this plus this plus this plus this minus that has to equal zero. That defines that constraint. All right, so let's look at this one. Uh, no more than, let's 
All right, so 30% of this would be roughly $25,200. And I'm saying down here, let's add this in one at a time. I'm saying no more than 30% in CCC. So is this going to change my solution if I add this constraint in? It is, because it's binding. So let's say 30%. And the reason I think CCC was high risk, right? So I'm going to put 30% high. And what does this constraint look like? What does this constraint down here look like? What's the coefficient in front of CCC? Very good, it's a 1. What's the coefficient in front of the total? Minus 0.4. Negative 0.3. And we're saying that that has to be less than or equal to 0. And you can see just from, the, from what we're doing right now, it's violating it. So if I go to solver, and I tell it about my new constraint, so I'm going to click Add. <coughs> Boom. Has to be less than or equal to, I'm not sorry, it should be H9. Should be less than or equal to J9. And I solve. Oh, I guess it is less than 30%. Let's make it, um, let's make it, uh, let's make it less than 20%. So let's change this, just so that it changes it, okay? So that's gonna make it negative uh, 0.2, because I know this will violate it. So I click Solver. Solve, find the solution, and now it's 20% in CCC, adhering to my constraint. What's this value mean? As negative 3.6 e to the negative 12th. What's that value the same as? It looks ugly. Yours might not look the same. Yours might have a different number in there. What is that equal? So that's saying negative 3.6 to the negative 12th. So move the decimal place 12 places to the left. For all intents and purposes, it is what? Not infinity. No. It's negative 3.6. I'm moving the decimal place 12 places this way, so it's 0 .00000, 11 of these guys. Virtually. Virtually zero, right? Virtually zero. And that's what we're saying, it has to be less than or equal to zero, well it's zero, right? And yours, yours probably has a different number, did you have a different number? That same damn number? Yeah? Depends what, sometimes Excel is funky, like depends on what, what version of Excel you have. Um, I'm not happy with this constraint, so because it's going to be. Let, let's say this. Uh, let's say I want to force at least 10% of my investment to be in triple B. It's not right now. I want to force at least 10% of my investment to be in triple B. What would that look like? I would. That would. What would that look? I'm going to force at least 10% of my investment to be in triple B. I'm just going to call it 10%. I'm saying triple B. has to be greater than 10% of the total, right? That makes sense, yes. So how do I write that? 
triple B minus 10% of total, greater than or equal to. Okay, so the coefficient for BBB is one. The coefficient for DDD is negative 0.1. Is that? Oh, yep, yeah, you're right. I want that in the total column, thank you. Negative point one. Copy my sum product down. Greater than or equal to solver add say H10 has to be greater than or equal to J10. I click solve again. Solver finds a solution. Now I'm investing a different amount. I'm still meeting all my investment objectives. It is now forcing, of the $96,000, it's forcing 10% of that to be in triple B, as I requested, right? As the, my client requested for this portfolio model, okay? What if I said this? What if I said, uh, what if I said I want somewhere between 10% uh, and 20% to be in triple B? So I'll tell you, somewhere between 10% and 20% Sometimes we do that, right? We say, yes, I don't know where, but maybe between 10% and 20% of my portfolio in triple B. How would I add that in? So I already have greater than or equal to 10%, so what would I do? Very good. I would add another constraint, right? Because it's an and kind of deal. And would say, It would say 20% BBB, and I would put a 1 there again. I would put negative <coughs> 0.2, and I would say that has to be less than or equal to 0. Now, it's not going to change my solution in this case, but I put in solver, I put in add, I tell solver about my new one. Solve. And it says somewhere between 10 and 20%. Well, in this case, it happens to be 10%, which is between 10% and 20%. So that is accomplishing this with something called a summation variable. And, and, and just to review a little bit before we move on to the next thing, a summation variable is a variable that we create via a constraint. Okay, that's what we're doing. We're defining a summation variable via this constraint. Okay, it's creating that total. And then we're using that total. Okay. It has to be one of our decision variables. It has to be something Excel can change. You can't ignore it. And it has to be part of your sum product the whole way through. Okay, you can't ignore it there. That's how we have to use it. Now, that might have been, you know tough, and you might say, well, why the hell would I do that? Uh, that's how, when we look at models and classic models and linear models, that's how they're done, but what do we have in Excel that can create a total field? What do we have in Excel that can probably do the same thing? All right, let's say this. Okay, I'm going to get rid of Let's, let's take this model right now. I'm going to make a copy of it so that we... Eh, I don't want to copy. All right. I'm going to get rid of this total decision. I'm just going to obliterate column G. So I'm going to right-click on it, and I'm going to delete it. Okay. Um, and hopefully it looks like yeah, everything adjusted nicely for me, right? I'm going to create, I'm going to put a total value here. 
because that's where I still want my total investment to be. I'll give you another way I can get the total because I have the powers of Excel to be in G4. What could I put in the G4? sum C2 through D2. Okay. Now I'm going to get rid of, okay, I'm going to get rid of all three of these constraints because I'm going to, I don't want to define it anymore because I'm creating it with that sum. So I'm going to get rid of 8, 9, 10, 11. So if I highlight those rows, right click, Delete. Okay, let's let's go to solver and make sure that things are straight over there. So let's go to solver and let's see. It says minimize G4. Well, great. I'm still minimizing G4 and that's my total. By changing cell C2 F2, that's still good. I have some bad references because I have some bad. Uh, I deleted some things, so I got to delete those constraints with bad references. I'm gonna get rid of that deal. That deal, and that deal. And I'm still minimizing the total, right? But instead of creating a definition constraint or summation constraint, I just use the sum value. So let's see if it works. So I'm going to click Solve. Solver found a solution. C2 through F2. So let's go to solver again. Set objective cell G4 by changing C2 through F2 and G6 through G7. All right, that should be good. So now it says put 60,000 in AAA, 24,000 in triple C, you meet your investment objectives and 84,000. What if I wanted to say, okay, the hell with the definition constraint, because I'm sure a lot of you are thinking that right now. And let's say I want to say right now at least 10% in triple B. How else could I do that? Without doing a constraint, but just adding it in the solver. I'll show you how I can do that. I can go to solver. And I can add a constraint that says D2, which is triple B, right? Has to be greater than or equal to. G5, or G4, which is my total, times 2 which is my triple B investment, has to be greater than or equal to my total, which is in G4, that's the sum, times 10%. Now if I click solve, it says okay, 85,714 with 80 with 10% of that in triple B. Easier that way, probably, right? For a lot of you. Does that make more sense, more straightforward? Let's add in a constraint. Let's say that uh, uh, triple C can have no more than 10%. Right now it looks like it has about 20 some percent, 19, 18 percent, something like that. How would I do that? So I'd go to solver, I'd say add triple C, which is GE2 has to be less than or equal to the total times 0.10 or 10%. Now if I solve, it's only putting 10% in there.
All right, so the next question usually is, well, which one should I do? Which way should I use? Uh, I want you to understand both, but I don't care which one you use, right? I don't care if you use sum. I don't care if you use a definition constraint. You'll see the book and the solutions in the book are very partial to the definition constraint, okay? But that's fine. If you think it's more straightforward to use the sum and, and work from there, I don't see any issues with that at all. Okay, I think that's, that's, that's fine, uh, no problem at all. Um, okay. I'm going to give you one to do while we're in class, but I don't want it to be too hard. So let's, I'll tell you what, let's go back to the old corner bar. Here's what I'd like you to do. This is the corn and barley problem that we did first week. But let's say no more than 30% of total production can be in corn. Okay? So corn production has to be less than or equal to 30% of the total. So if you have it already, great. If not, set up from scratch. It's going to take you long. But also add the constraint that 30% of production has to be less than 30% of production or total growth has to be in corn. We want to cap the corn to 30% of our field. And we don't know we're planting all 80 acres. We are, but let's assume we don't know that. Because you can just put in there less than or equal 24. So let's assume that that's not
you get to 20 percent? What changes it? So let's go back to, I think if you guys haven't solved it, it's on Blackboard under uh, chapter one, and it's, it says corn and barley solve redundant sample in class. So if I pull that up, this is what it looked like, okay? We solved this thing, and we got 20 acres of corn and 60 acres of barley. Uh, I could do this a couple different ways. I, I want to say that corn can't account for more than 20% of production. So let's do it with the sum method. So I'm going to say equal, out here in G2, I'm going to say equal sum C2 D2. Because that's my total. Okay. And then I'm going to go to data. And in solver, I'm going to add a constraint that says, hey, corn, which is in B C2, has to be less than or equal to the total, which is in G2, times 20%. I click Add, Cancel, click Solve. I know I go back to my previous sheet. And now it forced less than 20% to be in corn, which is exactly 20%. If I wanted to do this as a definition constraint, I could do that. I could put up here total. Okay, and I could put, I'll just put one, one, uh, this would be zero and zero. And let's make sure our sum product's right. It's not right because it's, it's only going from C2 to D2, and I want it to go include E2, so I'm gonna have to extend both of those. Okay, because I want to include that variable, and I want to copy that down. Okay. So how would I define that, that E2? How would I define that E2? What would the constraint, the definition constraint look like to define <coughs> that guy? What would the values be? One, one, negative one, equals oops. equals zero. So let's just create it with a constraint and then go from there. So I'm gonna go up back to oops, I'm gonna go back to my solver and I'm gonna get rid of that old one. Set objective cells F4, that's good. By changing cells, I want to go from C2 to E2 this time. And I want to say, let's see. Oops. I'm just going to have that screwed up. I'm going to say F6 through F7 is less than or equal to H6 through H7. And F8 is equal to H8. I click Solve, and all it does, remember that constraint forces E2 to be 80, and now I can use it, right? So the next constraint, I could say less than 20% corn, oops, sorry, this is say 1, negative 0.2 is less than or equal to 0. And now I have to tell Excel about that, so I would go up here and say solver, add, F9 has to be less than or equal to H9. does the same thing. So both methods will work, and I, I guess I don't care which one you do, but I do care that you know how to do one of them, okay? 
So for homework, if you're still having issues with this, I'll stick around and I can surely help you. Uh, for homework, I would like you to do, on pages 168 through 181 of your text, I'd like you to do number three. It's a long one, but it, it, it's good. A bless you. Uh, number five. You don't have to do number eleven. Don't worry about that. Uh, number 18. That's good. You can do, do 24 if you like, but you don't have to do 24. So just three, what did I say? Three, five, and 18. Those are the ones required, okay? And like I said, if you're having issues with Excel still or the summation variables, I'll be more than happy to help you. So have a great week. Drive home safely. I know the roads are, were a sheet of ice. Hopefully they're better now. See you next week.